There's one thing you should know about me. I specialize in a very specific type of DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Subconscious DaVinci Resolve tutorial. What up folks, it's Alex here. I hope you're well. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this really cool Inception slash Droneception style effects within DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna cover two specific techniques. One is using mirrors to sort of reflect and bend up or bend down the sides of your image. And the other is to use a gradient mask to composite two clips together seamlessly so you get that really cool ground and sky drone clips as well. So, without any further ado, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're on the Edit tab. Now, I'm just going to use this drone footage here of the boat on the ocean. And the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to create those sort of folded up mirrored sides because it's actually incredibly easy to do. So the first thing you want to do is to open up your effects library by clicking on this button here. And then open up your toolbox go to open effects and then scroll down until you get to the resolve FX stylized section it's near the bottom and you're looking for mirrors you want to grab that drag it and drop it onto your footage if you prefer you can also do this using an adjustment clip but I'm just going to drop the mirrors directly on for now and straight away you can see it's just mirrored right down the middle it's mirroring our left side over onto our right side so we just need to customize that mirror to give us the effect that we want. So click on your footage to make sure it's highlighted. And then in the top right hand corner, open up the inspector and then open up the open effects tab here. And then you should see mirrors. If it's minimized like so, you just need to double click to expand the menu. Now by default, it will enable just one mirror, but you do have six that you can play with. So we're going to go to mirror one here. You can see that it's enabled. And then we've got three options we can change. The X position, which just moves the mirror point left to right. Y, which is up and down. And then the angle. So because we want this to either fold up or fold down, it's the angle we want to look at first. So we're going to change this to either minus 45 or 45. So if we go to 45 degrees, it will bend down like so, giving us that sort of end of the world fall off or if we change that to minus 45 we get that wall of water so you can do either one you can achieve both the effects really really easily now for this one I'm actually cutting the boat in half so it sort of loses some of its effect so what I want to do is just change the X position here to move that mirror over to the right hand side a little bit like so I find it works really well if you line this mirror point here up with this bottom right hand corner then you get a real nice composition it balances really well and that crease becomes a little bit less noticeable if we hit play we can see it seems to be working perfectly so that's how you do your single wall or single drop off if you want to have one on each side it's really easy you just repeat the same process so we're going to click on mirror 2 here to expand that and then we're going to enable mirror 2 now mirror two is just gonna do the same as what we had before, what we started with, just a mirror straight down the middle. So it looks like it's lost everything that we had before, but don't worry, it hasn't. The first thing you need to do is click on this box here called flip, because at the moment it's taking the left side and reflecting it to the right. We want to take the right and reflect it over to the left. So we're gonna flip the mirror. Now that's starting to look a little bit like it, but it's not quite there. What this is actually doing is just mirroring right down the middle. I can show you that by just moving the X position. And because we've got a mirror on the right hand side, it's mirroring over to the left hand side. But the problem is if I play, you can quite clearly see this join in the middle and it's also cutting out the boat. So what we actually need to do is just make a few quick changes. 
First thing to do is to change the angle. You want to do the same as you did before, but the opposite. So in mirror one, we've got minus 45. So this time we just need 45. And it will look like that at the moment because our mirror is in the wrong position. So then we just need to change our X position, drag it out until it meets that point, And that's perfect. Now, another thing you can do with the mirrors, I'm just going to turn off my mirror too, and then I'm just going to reset my position. Now for the angle, I can just change that to minus 90 and then it'll reflect the ground, or in my case, the ocean up into the sky. Then if I change the Y position, I can just bring that up and we've got that sort of drone inception look where the sky is the ground. Now this works really well for this clip because it's a completely white sky. Sometimes it doesn't work so well because there's a real obvious line as to where the two meet. So there's another technique which I'm going to show you now, which enables you to do that, but a little bit neater. It also allows you to composite two different clips together as you saw in the introduction. So I'm going to delete this off my timeline and I'll just grab two more clips. So I've put my first clip on my timeline like so, which is just this clip here. Now I can either choose to put another version of this on top, which we can then reflect, or we can choose a different clip altogether. So I'm going to drag this next clip on and put it above it. So we've got the two clips, one on video one and another on video two. So select the clip on video two, this one here, the one above the other one. Again, open the inspector and then you're going to go to the transform area here and you're going to change this rotation angle to 180. And it's just going to flip this footage on its head. So it's upside down. And then using the position here, we're just going to drag this up so it's roughly in the right place. So it doesn't have to be exact, but sort of put it up there-ish. So that's sort of where I want it. I've got the sky down here. I want the ground sort of up there. Then I'm going to hit D on my keyboard just to disable that clip. And then with this clip here, the one that we can now see, we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to bring that down and sort of position it in roughly the right place. So we've got something that looks like that. Now obviously that looks janky because there's no blending going on, so we just need to blend the two together. So select the top clip on your timeline so it's highlighted in red, and then head into the color tab. And it should look something like this. Don't worry if your color tab doesn't look exactly like this. I'll show you the specific points that you need. The first thing you need is your nodes. So in the top right hand corner, make sure that you enable your nodes and you should see this area here. Right click on an empty space and then click on add alpha output. And that'll put a little blue marker here. Then all you need to do is drag this little blue square onto the little blue marker like so. And that will just enable you to make things within this clip transparent. And then next, come down to the menu here, right in the middle of the screen. And you want to select this one here, which is your window. And you'll get these options underneath. Now the one you want to select is called gradient. So give gradient a click. And then you get this appear in your window. Now you can click on the little circle in the middle to drag the gradient around wherever you want it. And then you grab the arrow and rotate it. So we're going to turn that around. And you can see what's happening is it's using a gradient mask to cut away some of this footage and expose the footage underneath, which is our second clip. So what we want to do is just drag this into the right place so that it's just doing the gradient, it's doing the mask, the blending where the sky is. Now you can move this arrow up and down to lengthen or shorten the amount of the gradient. Get it in roughly the right place. Drag this down. I think that looks pretty good for me. And then we can head back into the edit tab. Now if we hit play, that looks absolutely spot on for me. But if you wanted to, you could give that a click, make some more minor adjustments, bring them up, bring them down, head back into the color tab, adjust the gradient as you need to until you're completely happy with it. And that's it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this drone specific video. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, make sure to put them in the comments down below. And if you're new around here, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Until next time. Bye. Wee.
ていう。